Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now have you ever wanted a desktop motherboard with a laptop CPU soldered right onto it? I know I have. Ever since the days of those engineering sample Intel chips uh, slapped atop desktop boards that you could find on AliExpress, I've wanted to check something out uh, like this. We did so a while ago with an ITX board, uh, the BD770i from Minis Forum. That had an 8 core 16 thread Ryzen chip atop it, but this time we're looking at the BD795M, a micro ATX configuration with a 16 core 32 thread. Ryzen 9 7945HX soldered right on. This thing also uses laptop memory, interestingly enough, and you can also get a similar configuration, again, in ITX form factor, either with the standard 7945HX or the X3D version of the same chip, all at various prices. So I wanna talk a bit more about this board, the specs, the features, the operating temperature, does it throttle? How good is it in games? What's the power consumption and performance like? So without further ado, let's get straight into it and take a look at the BD795M, a board that absolutely fascinates me and one that I've been wanting to test out for a while. So let's get straight into it. I've seen a couple of reviews so I know a little bit about what to expect but here's my opinion and thoughts on this pretty interesting a uh, laptop slash desktop crossover if you like if we focus on the boards with the same CPU, then this Micro ATX version is slightly more expensive at the time of this video, $479 compared to $463 or £409 compared to $399, though it's currently sold out on the UK store again at the time of upload. I think the price is pretty reasonable considering the specs, but the board itself does look very basic. We have two M.2 SSD slots, two regular SATA ports, and an E-key slot for a wireless adapter. There is a lack of USB-C in terms of a header and rear connectivity. This larger form factor also encourages bigger and better cooling solutions like liquid AIOs, but there's no ARGB header. Speaking of cooling, the mounting layout is... Intel socket 1700 standard, which is interesting. I decided to go with old reliable here, my cheap thermal right Assassin King 120 SE. Best 15 pounds I ever spent on Amazon. It sits atop this thing perfectly. Actually, let's rewind a bit. See this thin metal slab? this heat spreader thing. It covers the Ryzen CPU, but it can also be removed. I actually took it off, replaced the thermal paste, and then reattached it because I found that doing so lowered the temperatures. More about that later. Continuing our tour of the board, and we have the same laptop memory slots as the ITX version, which officially supports 5200 MHz DDR5. I paired mine with 32 gigs, that's two 16 gigabyte sticks. These are actually 5600 MHz modules, which defaulted to a lower speed. There is an option to mess with the timings manually in the BIOS, so perhaps I'll see if I can get them running stable at a higher clock speed. Although 96 gigabyte max is stated on the product page, I've read reports of this working with 128 gigs. In the BIOS, we can also adjust fan speed settings, power configuration, PCIe gen, and integrated graphics options, etc, etc. I left everything at auto. I had planned on pairing this desktop slash laptop crossover with my 4070 Super. After all, it fits so well in my small case and looks pretty good as part of a zero RGB build, but I ended up swapping it out for the newer AMD RX 9070. I'm glad I did because again, despite the product page stating one thing, this time around being that the PCIe X16 slot is Gen 4, my card is actually running in Gen 5 mode, according to GPU-Z. The first thing I did was test CPU performance in Cinebench R23. The 7945HX scores 19.59 and 33.229 after a 10 minute run in a single and multi scores respectively. The only other 32 thread chip I have access to is an i9 14900K, which hopefully helps for context. It'll score better than the Ryzen, but it will also consume at least twice the power. The 7945HX HX peaked at just over 100 watts today and reach a maximum temperature of 90 degrees. I wonder how close this comes to a desktop 7950X in terms of performance. 
when it comes to gaming, the 7945HX will boost to over 5 GHz while sitting in the mid 70s temperature wise a lot of the time. Remember I actually repasted the CPU die itself after removing and then reseating the included heat spreader which probably isn't necessary but it is nice to see a few degrees knocked off the running temperatures. The chip is working really nicely in pairing with the 9070 especially at 1440p. The card is certainly able to stretch its legs here offering solid gaming performance across some of my favourite AAA titles. While I'm very impressed with the performance from this CPU especially considering the decent power consumption it's important to weigh up the costs and make some comparisons. Can you save a bit of money opting for a desktop CPU, desktop board and desktop RAM even if the CPU isn't quite as good, will it be enough to drive a powerful GPU and satisfy your gaming needs? It's also worth taking the aforementioned ITX board and CPU variant into consideration if it costs a little less. Always consider your options before making a purchase to make sure what's right for you. Now I like the BD795M but there's no ignoring the fact that if the board or CPU dies then the other component, the one that it's attached to, essentially becomes useless. Nothing beats the accessibility and upgradability of a do-it-yourself desktop, but I can certainly see the appeal here. After all, I've been using it for a few weeks now. Personally, I prefer this to the ITX versions for the fully customizable cooling configuration, even though I can see the appeal of the ITX models being a bit greater. Let's end with a quick look at the 7945HX's iGPU. It features Radeon 610M graphics which we have looked at before. Less demanding and eSports titles at lower settings are going to run ok and if you have a library full of older titles then you may be pleasantly surprised. I also experienced faultless video playback uh, even at 4K 144Hz. Absolutely no issues there and these graphics were plenty to drive my 5120x1440 uh, ultra wide screen monitor with no hiccups. But there we are. I've been meaning to take a look at this for a while. I've been using it on and off for weeks. Now I really do like it. Nice to see that it can be kept cool with a really cheap air cooler as well. The Thermorite AK120SE is something I've been using on a lot of systems. This isn't about that. This is about the BD795M. A really interesting piece of tech, I think. I can see it appealing to some people more so than the mini pcs we usually look at i think the audience is a lot wider for this very easy to set up just purchase it slap in a gpu and laptop memory of course as i said before consider the costs you might find a combo that's a little cheaper check out the used market for deals as always as well but as for this one well let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section thanks for watching and hopefully i'll see all of you in the next one